very interesting when you study Revelation. Very interesting stuff. So we covered the first seal, and then the first seal, that was supposed to be the Antichrist, the white horse. Then we covered the second seal, which is referring to war, and that was referring to the communist nations. Then we covered famine here, where it was a black horse. And it may be that the Catholic Church, the Jesuits, may be holding all the reins to that with some Jews and Masons. Then we covered right here where it gets really, really interesting concerning death and hell. So concerning death and hell, there are basically two things that are happening over here with death and hell. So concerning death and hell, it is going to be death first, and then hell will follow with him. So as hell follows death, it's going to be a nightmare. And then demons are going to be unleashed and truly hell on earth. Now the Bible, it'll show you how many people will die as a result of these four seals. Let's look at the book of Revelation chapter 6. And then we'll read verse 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse, so I explained that part. And his name that sat on him was death. I explained that. And hell was followed with him. I explained that part too. Now, this is the part that I didn't concentrate on. And, the, and power was given unto them to both death and hell over the what? Fourth part of the earth. So then notice that a quarter of the world will die out with the sword, with hunger, with death, and the beasts of the earth. Remember, these matched up with horsemen number two, three, and four, and hell itself. The last part of verse eight. So a quarter of the world will be dying out. So you know how many are going to die out? That, where I said millions at the beginning, now you realize it's going to be billions. That's a lot of people. So billions is going to be the death toll number. You're like, my goodness, so many people have to die. Well, that's how scary God's wrath is. That's why it's best to get saved in Jesus Christ right now. Get saved right now so that you can go to heaven and then escape this wrath of God during the tribulation. The, but the death toll will number to billions. That's the thing. Now, there's one thing that I want to point out, which was kind of spoiled by some people. Yeah. But it's good to study. Amen? Amen. Now, what's very interesting is that a lot of people are wondering, you know, Pastor, what about the Muslims? You don't really cover the Muslims here. A lot of them want to focus that the Antichrist figure would be a Muslim or Islamic figure rather than Catholic. But the thing is this, is that you're, you're underscoring, you're overlooking the Muslim's role. The Muslim's role, which I find extremely interesting in the Bible, is going to be definitely different from Catholics. The Catholics today, they're, no doubt, they're joining that United Nations branch. So the Antichrist, as I mentioned before to you, is going to be, in my opinion, going to be a pope. And that's where the Catholic Church and the UN is going to be combined together. The Catholic will be joining the UN. And then all the world religions are going to follow it. So this will include the Muslims, and then it will include Judaism, it will include Buddhism, Hinduism, and then the rest of the evangelical Christianity world, so to speak. So then the ecumenical movement, right? So then the ecumenical churches we can put right here. So we see right here that the Muslims, that they can follow the Antichrist over here. But they want to put the Muslims as like a chief or leading figure because they see them as a very big role in the Bible. They are a big role, but they are not going to be the Antichrist figure. Well, then why are they a big role, Pastor? Because this is what I believe. What I believe is this, is that you notice... As I mentioned to you before, this is referring to the communist nations I pointed out, right? But what you're going to notice is that in Revelation chapter 20, which I kind of taught you before, it's Gog and Magog. So this is referring to not just Russia or the communist allies. This is, this is going to include the Arabs too. That's what's famously used. Some prophecy scholars point out that it's going to be uh, Russia and it's going to be the Muslims. That's the key point. So then, but pastor, I, you already wrote out the Muslims for this one. Yeah, they're going to be here too. You might say, well, that don't make sense. Are you kidding me? Are you looking at current events? 
Aren't there Muslims for this side and Muslims that are rogue yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. You know why? That's how big their role is. Yeah. How big their role is, is they're going to be everywhere. That's why. There's going to be a, I mean, that's what they're debating about right now. In Berkeley, I was at, I was, when I left the classroom, I saw on this board they had an Islam class and this Muslim class, they were like debating about different branches and different interpretations of the Quran. And they mentioned you can take the literal approach, which they refer to as the terrorist or fundamentalist Muslims. To be honest, that's real genuine Islam. Yeah, right. yeah. And then they said, or you can take the second approach, which is scholarly approach. And I was like, ah. And I was like, and I was like that sounds like Calvinists. Yeah. That sounds like Christian theologians. <clears throat> they don't want to take the verse literally. They want to go by a scholastic approach in literature. And who takes that scholastic approach? That's the Antichrist system. That's the system of Satan where he wants to make things metaphorical, Alexandrian type text mentality, metaphorical interpretations. Why? Because how can you get a UN if you take everything literally? Yeah, you know, all cultural values and religions, you have to blend it in a way together. And the best way you can do that is to make religious doctrines metaphorical, allegorical. See that? But Islam is such a ramp and widespread religion that obviously not all Muslims are going to join this. Do you see that going on right now? These guys are crazy. So you're going to have a number joining this one, but trust me, it's not going to be all Muslims. So what's going to happen? They're all over, and that's why current events show there is this division of Muslims going on. There are the ones who are for peace, and then the other one who the world or United Nations consider as they're not real Muslims. They're the rogue ones. They're the terrorists, see? So these guys, they're going to be joining this one. Now, concerning the horsemen, what's so interesting is that if you look at all four colors of the horsemen, the Muslim nations will match up with all four colors of their flags, yeah. which is very, very interesting. Yeah. So then, in other words, see, that's how big their role is. Their role is so huge that they're going to be in all four. So then you'll see Muslims involved over here, the black horse, and then you'll also see Muslims involved with the pale horse as well. Now you might say, how might they get involved with the famine system over here? Well, how they could be involved is that because these, it's not just these nations starving, these nations are starving too. So then obviously they're going to have a major role in how they control their own food. Like North Korea, the communists. You see how the government hoards their own food and they do that? So the Muslim nations, if they're going to be allied with this, it's going to be natural they're going to follow that same system. But not only that, if the Catholic Empire has the control on the world's economy, then their lackeys, which is very interesting when you study conspiracies, when you dig into conspiracies, you see more on Masons, Jews, and Catholics, but they don't mention too much on Muslims, yeah, that's true. which is pretty interesting. But if you dig into that, you will see some Muslim connections, which is very interesting. It's pretty interesting. But they're a very rare role. They're a very rare role. Why? Because they're going to be more, more so here than here. So Muslims are basically all over. So they're going to have a hold on the world's economy of food in some way. Now in death and hell, this is what's very interesting, which is what I tried to color with the green pen before, but it didn't work that last time. So let's see if it'll work this time. Okay, it worked this time. All right. The Bible says pale horse, right? What's very interesting is this, is that if you're going to think about <clears throat> being pale, it's like sickly, as if it's like going to faint. But you ever heard people using that term when they're pale in the face that they would say, oh, I'm turning green? Or cartoon shows when a person's about to throw up, he's pale, that they'll color it green instead. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. So when the Bible says pale, in our English wording, we can see it as a green. Now, if you want to act all Greek and geeky with me, what's so interesting is this. If you look up that Greek word, pale, horse, that actually, the Greek word for that can mean the color green. Wow. How about that? So, you know what the Muslim's chief color is, right? Yeah, it's green. That's their chief color. 
So then when the Bible says a quarter of the world wiped out, when death and hell is unleashed, it may be that these Muslims, they might do something really crazy going on, following death and hell, where it might just wipe out a quarter of the world's population. That's pretty scary, right? Yeah, that, you got to realize this. These people, these Muslims who blow themselves up, and that we had to go to war in Iraq and stuff like that, these people, you got to realize this, they are that crazy. Yeah. They are that crazy. If you study history, it is insane. They would, con they would slaughter everyone in the city, in the town without mercy, unless you convert to Islam. If you look at some, some of the Muslim scholars today, I'm talking about Muslim scholars, they would quote that their job is to convert the whole world into yeah. Islam. That is their goal. You might say... Why is Islam the world's fastest growing religion? Not Catholicism. Catholicism is still the largest, but that's not the fastest. And it's not Christianity. The world's fastest growing religion is Islam. You might say, how is that? It's so simple. You convert or we cut off your head. Yeah. And that's why family cultures, what do they do? They, they strictly raise their children in Islam. They're super strict, more than today's Christians. More than today's Christians, the Muslims, they would, raise, they would keep an eye on their children, make sure they're raised in their own doctrine and admonition. And they would have their children memorize passages in the Quran. And then you'll see six-year-old, nine-year-olds marching around in a parade holding machine guns. It's sad. You might, if some of you are in shock mode right now, you have not been watching. You know why? You've been watching too much of America where Christians are the one taking out guns and shooting people. But my goodness, that's only a small part of the world. You're not looking worldwide. If you look worldwide, that's what CNN, CBS, Fox News, Fox News are not covering, right. is those children holding machine guns and children blowing themselves up. And I'm talking about little children. You might say, that's wicked, demonic, and sad. You're absolutely right. That is of the devil. Amen. Satan wants to rob little children. And he doesn't care how old or how young you are. Yeah. He doesn't care as long as you burn in hell with him. That's how evil he is. And this religion, if you call this a religion, a religion of peace, and if I make fun of Mohammed and kick his butt and you get mad and upset with me on that one, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That man has caused generations of millions and over a billions, over a billion, to follow this wicked system, lay down their lives for a lost cause, for a lie, and for hurting other people and hatred and violence. If you don't think that I shouldn't criticize a man like that, you're, you're totally brainwashed. You're deluded yourself. Amen. That wicked man, Mohammed, he's such a wicked man. Amen. He is where he belongs right now. 